tell you about my life. I have a, I had a beautiful wife, and we had eight children. Uh, that I'll tell you is a life. Uh, I was driving up the Morgan Highway one day and uh, I saw this lot for sale. So it was just a big wooded rocky lot and I, I contacted the people and uh, I don't remember the exact figures but uh, they were very minimal. There was 30 acres in the lot and uh, I, I think they wanted about $20,000 or something, less than, uh, uh, you know, less than the market. And I, I cut that price even back and I, I made them an offer and they took it. My son had been in the miniature golf sales business. So we got to talking and we decided we would build what we called an outdoor miniature golf course there, only different than all the others. All the others were little, individual units with just a, a place to put in a hole and then you walk to the next individual unit. Ours was much more like a, an actual golf course. In about uh, 1983, I was looking for a job. I went to work for Loma Enterprises in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Uh, it was a company that sold miniature golf courses. I worked there for two years. Um, I came across a company, Harris Miniature Golf in Wildwood, New Jersey, and I was a salesman. I went to the vice president and I said, how do I sell against this company? And he said, don't worry about them. Uh, they make a product that's too good and it's too expensive and they're not competition. Well, the fact that they said that the product was too good, me being a salesman, that's who I wanted to sell for. So I contacted Joe Harris and I said, I'd like to come work for you. And in uh, 1986, that's what I did. I moved down to Wildwood, New Jersey, and I started working for Joe Harris selling miniature golf courses. After working at Harris for two years, actually moving into pretty much running the company, uh, the owners wanted to retire. And uh, we worked out a deal, and I bought them out over time. And uh, today I'm the owner. I was seeing how successful some of these people were in the miniature golf business and I wanted to open up a miniature golf course of my own. At that time, family entertainment centers were big and they were putting miniature golf courses next to batting cages, go-karts, bumper boats, uh, small buildings with arcades. Uh, at the same time, my father was getting ready to retire and he thought this would be a nice retirement business. So uh, in 1995, uh, we built Leahy Family Fun Park. Batting cages, go kart rides, bumper boats, and soft play slides. Mini golf with waterfalls. Leahy Fun Park has it all. So we built it and we opened it, and uh, people came. And I didn't want to get involved. I, I wanted to be retired. So I sold my interest to my son, and then he ran it for a while, and now his son is running it. You know, we, we had graduated college, kind of moved on, tried some different things, and the park had went up for sale and wasn't selling. So, you know, Mar and I kind of discussed it. It was an option for us to come and take over the park. Uh, we talked about it, kind of weighed our options, and we thought, you know, it'd be a really fun opportunity and a good opportunity for us, both marketing majors. You know, it's something that we love doing, running a business. So, uh, yeah, we decided to move back from Rochester, come back home to Scranton, and take over the fun park. They're doing an excellent job. You know, they're, they're with it as far as all the social media marketing, uh, with the marketing is the only way you're gonna get people to come to the park. Uh, working with my son and his wife in the business has been great, um, mostly because they're doing such a good job. I can't suggest things for them to do because they're doing it before I even think of it. Uh, it's, uh, it's a good business. I always had ideas of, you know, we could do this with the park, we could do that with the park. I went to college for business and you know, ideas were always running through my head. So when the opportunity came to take over the park, I certainly already had a ton of things that I was thinking of and improvements that we could make. 
that I, you know, wanted to implement. Sure, when we took the park over in 2008, uh, I was definitely going down. There were a lot of things that needed to be, you know, taken care of, maintenance issues, uh, general just cleanliness, landscaping, and the park at the time wasn't doing too well. So for the first uh, couple of years, we definitely had a lot of building to do, as well as a lot of uh, marketing to do to get the word back out that we were open, we were trying to make improvements. And you know, through the years, you know, kind of building back that trust with the community and bringing people in here, making constant improvements, we've really been able to, to bring back our customer base. And you know, as of today, we're, we get new attractions and revamps all the time. And you know, I think everybody sees that and the business is really, you know, been booming since then. People think it would be very challenging working with your your spouse, but my wife and I actually get along great here. It's great to be able to bounce ideas back and forth and you know have somebody that you really talk to and you can really trust their opinions. And you know, sometimes it is hard to believe that we can do it. Uh, lots of people say they never could, but for us it's it's never been a problem. We always we love working together. We get to see each other all day and it's been a good match. Um, you know, one of the other greatest parts is being able to work with family. We have a lot of family who come in and out of the park, a lot of cousins, and you know, now we're getting into the next generation, nieces and nephews who are coming, and to you know, be able to work with them and get to know them on a more personal level uh, is really fun. Uh, you know, one thing that seems to be coming up more and more now, we are limited here. We're more of an outdoor attraction. Uh, most of our, our biggest things are all outdoors with the mini golf and the go-karts but our indoor arcade is also nice and we would like to expand that, something that could kind of keep us open through the winter and kind of, you know, really have us be a place that people could come for fun year round. Uh, one of the most important things my parents taught me about running the business is that the reason we're here is to show people a good time, for people to have fun. Uh, there's no reason in giving your customers a hard time or worrying about, you know, this or that. Just, just give them everything they want, keep them happy. Uh, everybody's here just to have fun. So you know, keep the customers happy and they'll keep coming back. I learned a lot from my father. Uh, I would call him weekly uh, when I first got into business, asking him different questions, getting his opinion on different things. He would tell me uh, his opinion and then he would never ask me what I decided to do. Uh, so I thought that was a great trait because uh, I would make the decision based on his input, but I would be making the decision. I would never have to do what he said to do. Always tell the truth, period. You know, I don't care how bad the news is or what the situation is, always tell the truth. You'll find out it always works out better than any fabricated story you can come up with. You know, in five years from now and 10 years from now, we're hoping that, you know, the park is still going strong, that we can keep everything, you know, maintenance wise, together and you know adding attractions possibly expanding the park or maybe expanding to other locations within the area and doing you know multiple parks and expanding the business